In this tutorial, we'll be looking at using the toolpath tiling feature in the software to overcome problems we may be presented from time to time. That being the size of the project that we want to cut on the machine exceeds the machine's workable area. In this demonstration, we'll be showing you how to use the feed through option, which is when one dimension of the project we wish to cut exceeds the workable area in one of the axes. So let's start by opening a new copy of the software. And for this we're going to use our pre-prepared file, so just go to open an existing file, navigate to the projects folder and then open the toolpath tiling hyphen 3D. And then press open on that. Now for this demonstration we're going to be working with a mantelpiece which has the dimensions of 72 inches uh, in width and a height of 9 inches with a depth of 1.5 inches. And we're going to imagine that my machine has a workable area of 24 inches by 24 inches. So as you can see, the height has no problem at all being machined uh, by our imaginary CNC machine, but the width we're going to struggle with, which is where we're going to use the toolpath tiling feature for the feed through option. So let's head over to the toolpath tab, and we can do this by navigating to this button here and let's get a feel for what we're working with. So let's go to the preview toolpath form and with our finishing uh, toolpath highlighted let's just press the preview selected toolpath button. And this will give you an idea of what we're actually going to be uh, splitting up into sections to then machine using the feed through option with our tiling manager. So let's close the preview toolpath form and I'm just going to go ahead and tile the windows so that then I can see both the 2D view and the 3D view. And under the toolpath operations, I'm just going to go ahead and set the tile toolpaths option. And this will bring up the toolpath tiling manager just here. Now at the moment, it's deselected. And until we actually select this option, it won't go ahead and create any tiles for you. So let's activate the tile toolpaths option and here we'll be presented with our options. So in the previous tutorial we've covered the individual tiles option which is where uh, we either are trying to create a larger project than our material size that we may have or it may be the fact that uh, the project is also larger than our machine area in both the X and the Y axis. But in this tutorial we're going to concentrate on the feed through options specifically the feed through in X. So let's select that option and then we can go ahead and then specify our tile size. Now you'll notice that the height in Y has been greyed out and that's because it's taken that we're okay uh, in that axis. But for the X axis we can specify what type of size that we're limited to either because of our material size or our machinable area size. So I know that I've got a two foot, uh, so 24 inches of width that I can machine. So I'm just going to specify 24 inches in there. Now, nothing will actually happen until we hit this button here to update the tiles. You know, just as soon as I do press the update tiles in the 2D and the 3D view, you'll notice that it will be sectioned and only the parts of the actual uh, toolpath, if I select them, will actually be displayed for that particular section. So let's hit update tiles, and you'll see that now we've got tile 1, tile 2, and tile 3 in the 2D view and you'll see as the tile 1 indicated by uh, being highlighted in red is now the active tile and you can also see this in the toolpath tiling manager where it says the active tile and it says tile 1 and we can actually just change the tile from tile 1 to tile 2 and it'll also update that in the 2D and 3D view to show you the toolpaths. We can also change the active tile by double clicking in the background as well in the 2D view so if I just clicked there you'll see that will change to tile 3 if I click in tile 2 and then tile 1. So now we have our tiles let's talk about now and demonstrate how we actually achieve this on the machine. So if I just move the toolpath tiling manager out of the way a little and then we go to the preview toolpath form and I'll just reset the preview and what you've got to do is imagine that this is our material that we've got on the machine so I'm just going to take off the roughing pass and just to demonstrate obviously this the, the finishing pass. Now this is the material that we've got and we're going to feed this through in X. So the first 24 inches of this uh, plank of wood is going to be positioned on the machine 
and it's going to be the x0, y0 is going to start here. And what we're going to do is we're then going to run the first set of toolpaths. So if I just preview that, this is what we'll get from the first uh, tile. And what we do then, once the machine's finished doing that first tile, is we then feed through the plank of wood through the machine, and then we reset the x0, y0, so it starts here. And then we then run the next toolpath, so we'd go to tile 2, and then preview that toolpath. And we do the same again for the final section, so then we'd move through the wood, through the, the gantry on the machine, we'd reset the x0, y0 to match exactly where it reached the end of tile 2, and then we'd run the tile 3 toolpath. and then we would be left with our finished product, like so. Now obviously you can do this uh, in separate pieces as well, so if you only had 24 inch in length wood then you could do that the same as well, so you just uh, run the first tile tool pass and then replace the first piece of wood with the second, run the second tiles tool pass and then the same for the third. Now to help us visualize this there is this option in the Toolpath Tiling Manager which says draw toolpaths in original position for visualization. So that's why when we highlight the toolpaths, you'll see that the X0, Y0 displayed by this red feed line here actually starts from the very end of what would be the total length uh, of the plank of wood that would be needed to create this mantelpiece. However, obviously, that wouldn't be correct because obviously our X0, Y0 position should start here and also for tile 2 it should start here. Now if we untick this option here and then reset the preview you'll see that now we're just left with the single plank of wood which represents our 24 by 9 inches piece of wood and then we're able to actually just see exactly what we're machining for that particular tile. So if I just uh, select tile 1 and then preview that and this is what we would be left with if we were using, say, uh, a single 24 by 9 uh, piece of wood, or if we were feeding it through, this is the section that would be cut. And once that's finished machining, we can then swap out the piece of wood if we're using individual pieces, or we can feed through if we're using a longer piece of material, and then we could then run the second tool pass again. And this is what the machine will see, and this is what the machine is going to carve out on whatever material you happen to put under the gantry at that particular time. So this option just helps you visualise uh, what it's all going to turn out like if it's all in place. Uh, but for a realistic view of what you're actually going to be cutting uh, for the tool pass, this is the view that you need. It's all down to personal preference really. They both help you visualise, one, what the final product is going to look like, and two, what the actual machine actually sees and what the toolpath is actually going to be cutting for that particular tile. Now there is one more option left that we haven't covered as of yet, and that's the tile overlap. Now this is used for a number of reasons. It may be that you are using a special shaped cutting tool, which requires you to use all or part of the diameter of the tool to achieve the tool's desired effect. So we may need to overcut slightly to accomplish this. Then also we may want to run a profile cut around the part to ensure uh, we get perfectly cut lines. So that if we are using individual pieces of material to cut this on, uh, we can ensure that they fit together perfectly when it comes to piecing them together. In our situation though, 24 inches is our maximum work area. So in this situation, we would have to be cutting material smaller than a workable area or we may do damage to our machine. So to demonstrate this, we're going to add a tile overlap of half an inch. It's going to add 0 0.5 in there. And as with any options that we actually want to apply to the tiles, we need to make sure that we hit this button here to update the tiles. So let's click that. And then if we turn on one of the toolpaths, like the finishing toolpath, and you'll notice that the toolpath will be uh, extended or overlapped into what would be the next tile. And as you can see here, that the toolpath actually extends the length of the material set size that we've got here in the tile width demonstrated here. And you can also see this in the 2D view. So if we just zoom in a bit, you'll see in the 2D view we've got this red area here which shows you basically that the current tile is overlapping 
into the second tile by that much. So throughout this whole thickness, I've tiled two. That is what's going to be overlapped from tile one. So I'm just going to take off the tile overlap. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, save out all the tool paths that are required for me to actually run this on the machine. So I'm just going to click update tiles. I'm just going to move the tile manager out of the way a little bit. And then in the 3D view, I'm just going to drag our object uh, into the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press close on the preview toolpaths form, and then I'm going to go to the save toolpaths icon. And in here, this is where we can then save out our toolpaths in the normal way. You will notice, however, that the option here to output told toolpaths is selected. If this is not enabled, it will just save out the toolpaths as if it was running uh, the, the toolpath on the whole of the material, not in the tile width that we specified in the tile toolpath manager. If we had a uh, toolpath that used the same tool, we can do what we normally do. So we could uh, select multiple toolpaths from the list down here and output all the visible toolpaths to one file as long as they're sharing the same tool. As these toolpaths are not sharing the same tool, we'd have to select each of these toolpaths manually. So let's just untick to output all visible toolpaths to one file. And let's just show the roughing pass and then select the roughing toolpath so that it's then selected in the list to be saved. Select our post processor. I'm just going to go with the standard G code in inches and then just click save and then give your toolpath a name. So I'm just going to call this 3D Roughing and then just press save. And if we just press save again, this will bring up the open dialog box and you'll notice that we've now got T1 underscore 3D Roughing, uh, T2 underscore 3D Roughing and T3 underscore 3D Roughing. Now what's happened is that every time that we choose to save out one of these toolpaths, it then saves it out in three segments or to how many segments uh, it makes up to create our whole piece that we want to create. So because I've selected to use a tile width of 24 inches and 24 goes into 72 uh, three times. So that's how we've ended up with three lots of toolpaths for every toolpath that's in this list. So again, just demonstrate that again. So select that and then highlight, make sure that this is highlighted here and then go to save again. So 3D finish, just call that and then just press save and then we just open that again. And you'll see that we've now got uh, T1 underscore representing tile 1 for the 3D finish. And then we've also got tile 2 for the 3D finish and then tile 3 for the 3D finish. And what we can do now is what we normally do, so it just so that we can go back to our work if we need to, we can save our work and edit the toolpath in the future if we need to. So I'm just going to go ahead and press save or give that a name. So I'm just going to call this toolpath tiling hyphen 3D, press save, and that's it. And that now brings us to the end of this tutorial, so thank you for watching.